Hi everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching another episode of Big Rock Media. Thanks for tuning in. Today, the GS and its bigger cousin, the GSA, have become technological powerhouses with just about every feature and innovation that BMW can throw at it. And of course, with that, the weight has gone up and the price has gone up, and we're going to get into that today. This is my fourth GS model, and at this point I've owned the standard GS and the GSA, and today we're going to take a deep dive into the differences and dispel some of the myths surrounding uh, the larger GSA and how it compares to the standard GS. I think on first look, you might look at the GS Adventure and say, well, it's a lot heavier and it looks really, really bulky. But today I'm going to tell you why that might not be such a bad thing and why you might actually want to consider the GSA even if you weren't previously. I'll also tell you why in some cases the GS, the non-adventure version, might be better fit for you. It just depends on your needs and what you prefer in a bike. So obviously the standard GS is lighter, it's a little bit less expensive, and it's less bulky than the GSA. But the GSA is more set up for long distance touring. So if you're planning to buy a standard GS and then put a bunch of accessories on it to bring it up more to the level of the GSA, you're probably going to be a lot better off buying the GSA to begin with. In today's video, I'm going to tell you why it's actually going to be cheaper and better to start with the GSA if you're going to heavily accessorize your standard GS. So before we go into the studio and really break down the price and the weight differences, there's a few things about the GSA that are really unique that, that separate it from the standard GS. The first thing is the fuel capacity. This 7.9 gallon tank on the GSA gives you a real world range of probably around 350 miles, whereas a 5.3 gallon tank on the standard GS, you're probably looking at around 200 miles. Another big difference with the GSA is the wind protection. The GSA has a larger tank and fairing. You can see that the legs have a lot more wind protection. You have a lot more wind protection for your chest and your torso, and you have these winglets as well. And we'll talk about if you can add those to your GS. So the GS Adventure has a higher seat height, and that's gonna be very important for those of you who may be a little bit shorter. Let's talk about suspension for a second. The suspension is quite a bit different between these two bikes. So there's two things I wanna point out. The GSA has about around an inch more suspension travel than the standard GS, which makes the bike higher. It gives it more travel for off-road riding. The other difference that some people don't know is that the, the GSA have, has a different suspension rake angle than the standard GS. It actually, for 2021, has a, a sharper rake uh, which makes it handle a little bit differently than the standard GS, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So with all that out of the way, let's go up into the studio and break down the price and the weight differences between these two bikes to help you make the best decision for yourself. All right, welcome to the Big Rock Studio. Now before I dive in here, there's a few things that I just want to point out up front. For the comparisons, the specs, the features, the weight, the pricing, I'm gonna use the 2021 GS as an example because I can get the most accurate pricing and I think a lot of people are shopping for new bikes as opposed to used bikes. But I think in general, if you're looking at the water-cooled boxers all the way back to 2013, a lot of what I show here is gonna be pretty comparable. So before we kind of go down the build sheet and look at the pricing and the weight for adding the stuff to the regular GS, let's look at some of the basic spec differences. Now I mentioned some of this in the introduction video, but I wanna go over it in more detail. So the suspension travel on the standard GS is 7.5 in the front and 7.9 in the back, as opposed to the GSA, which is 8.3 and 8.7. So around an inch more travel there. The fuel capacity uh, on the standard bike, 5.3 gallons, and on the GSA, 7.9 gallons. Now keep in mind, this is US gallons. Suspension rake angle. So this is something that I need to kind of confirm with BMW, and I've sent them an email because so in the old days, the GSA used to have more rake than the standard GS. In other words, it had a, a larger number on the suspension rake angle. But for 2021, the specs that BMW is showing is that the standard GS is 25.7 suspension rake and the GSA is 24.9. So it looks like they've sharpened up the rake on the GSA, maybe to make it uh, handle and turn in faster. I'm not sure, but if anybody knows for sure on that, please put it down below in the comments and we'll correct the video but suspension rake angle is really gonna change how the bike feels. Even a small change will change how it feels. And, and my thinking is that maybe they're sharpening the rake angle a little bit on the GSA because it's a heavier, bulkier bike and they want it to have as good a steering response as the standard GS. Let's talk about seat heights for a minute. Now, do realize that BMW sells like low seats and high seats, but I'm going with the standard seat height. So they're 33.5 on the regular GS and an inch and a half higher at 35 inches on the GSA. So that's quite a bit and you're really gonna notice that. Now on my personal GSA, if I put the seat in the low position, I think it's lower than that 35 inches. I think it's like drops an inch or so. So you do have a low and high position and it's very easy to change that on the rider seat. It just takes about like 10 seconds to do. So. You can raise and lower it. I run it in a high position because I like more leg room, but I'm five foot 11, so that's what I like. 
All right, so let's jump into the pricing right now. So a couple things on the pricing. I'm factoring in the premium package to both bikes because the truth is almost everybody gets the bike with the premium package. The premium package gives you things like the dynamic ESA, the cruise control, the, you know, the LED lighting, the um, quick shifter, um, ride modes, all the stuff that pretty much the GS is known for and pretty much everybody gets that. It is possible to order a special order GS without that package and the price drops like a lot, like three or $4,000 less, but I hardly ever see any of those out there. So I'm including that in the price for both bikes. I'm also including for 2021 what they call the lighting package because I'm seeing that ordered on every bike that I've looked at at, at all the dealerships online. Basically, it gives you the adaptive headlight and the cruising light, all the features that they advertise on the 21 as if they were standard, but of course, they're charging you a little bit for that. Okay, so with that in mind, here's how the pricing breaks down. So the standard 1250GS, and keep in mind, all this is US dollars. You can convert it to your own currency if you need to. The standard GS is 22,465, and it weighs 549 pounds. The 1250GS Adventure is $25,665 US dollars and 591 pounds. Now we can talk about weight in another video because yeah, they are heavy bikes, but there's reasons why they're heavy and there's also reasons why they don't feel that heavy when you ride them. But anyway, we'll cover that later on. So let's look at what comes on a GSA that doesn't come on a GS. What would that cost to add to a standard GS if you wanted it? And also what would that add to the weight? So there's actually a lot of stuff here on this list, which I'll start to show you here. So crash protection. So the GSA comes standard with from BMW with the factory installed uh, stainless steel upper and lower crash bars. And if you were to buy those from BMW, uh, they would be about $830 for the upper and lower combined. And that would add around 14 pounds to the bike give or take. I'm doing my best guesses, best estimates with what I could look up on the weight. The other part of the people like call it the scaffolding, right? Like the bike has all the scaffolding all over it. Well, yeah, it does. It also has the luggage racks on the back. So the luggage racks are actually very, very impressive, very nicely made and they're stainless steel. Um, and it's, it's the side racks and also that top rack. It's a whole tubular system. And it allows you to mount either hard cases from BMW or aftermarket brands, or you can put on soft luggage from whatever your favorite manufacturer is. If you were to add those luggage racks to your standard GS, so the standard GS, you can put the Vario bags on it, which are the plastic cases that expand. They're great bags. I, I've had them before and I really like them, but I, I, these days I prefer to ride with soft luggage on an adventure bike. So anyway, uh, to add those to your standard GS will cost you $845, which is pretty crazy. I can't believe that they cost that much, but that's what they cost. Now, as we go through the pricing, you need to realize that I'm not including labor in this because I don't know what you're paying for labor. Maybe you're putting this stuff on yourself. Maybe the dealer's giving you a break, but probably in reality, you're gonna have to pay for labor to put these things on, which is gonna drive these prices up even more than they already are. So the luggage racks uh, weigh around nine pounds or so. Again, that's my best estimate from what I could find. Uh, a few other things that you have to look at. So enduro foot pegs. The standard GS comes with smaller foot pegs with a rubber insert. You can take the rubber insert out, but you have a small platform. If you get the GSA, you get the larger enduro foot pegs, which are, in my opinion, kind of required if you're gonna have a GS, if you're ever gonna take it off the pavement at all. So that will cost you 250 bucks to do that. Wind protection. So there's two parts to the wind protection. I'm not gonna cover the winglets, the things on the side, because it's hard to add those to the standard GS. I think you can if you drill it yourself and kind of custom install it, but it's not really a factory option. And I don't even know what those cost. I think they're another couple hundred dollars. So I'm just gonna say the $200 for the touring shield. So to put the GSA shield on a standard GS, you'd have to spend another couple hundred dollars to buy that. Now the last item is the most expensive and it's probably gonna be the most controversial. So here's the deal with this. The GSA, because it has that longer suspension travel and stiffer spring weight, what would it take to put that on a standard GS? So BMW thought of this and a few years ago, I think it was 2017 maybe when they had those rally models that you could get the sport suspension package and it was an add-on option that cost you know, 300 to $400. But here's the problem on the 2021 bikes. So here's the interesting thing is that I, using the BMW configurator, I tried to add the sport suspension to a base 1200 GS or a base color with the, the, the ice gray color, right? And it won't let you do it. So when you try to add the sport suspension, it says you have to add the rally style package. So it looks like for 21, unless the configurator is wrong, which it could be, it looks like you have to add those two packages together, which costs $1,300. 
Now, if you were able to buy the sports suspension on its own for like $400 and not have to pay for that rally style, then that would save you money there. So how does this all add up? Well, you've got $4,271 in extras. See, they, those, those things, they really add up a lot and around 27 pounds. So that would bring the standard GS up to $26,736 and 576 pounds. Uh, compared to the GSA, when you get all that stuff, factory installed, don't have to pay for labor, you don't have to bolt stuff on, it's warranted, it's ready to go for 25,565 and 591 pounds. So you can see that um, the GS actually costs more if you were to equip it similarly. So if you want to accessorize your GS a lot, you really should look at a GSA as long as you're okay with the increased bulk and the increased seat height. Of course, that's not the end of the story, is it? Because the GSA holds more gas. So, and that weighs. So gas weighs somewhere around like seven something pounds per gallon. So I did the math, 2.6 gallons of extra gas is 17.3 extra pounds. So if you were to add that weight to your, to your standard GS, assuming that you're carrying it maybe in a bladder tank or rotopax or something, which actually adds even more weight on top of the gas, but that would be 593 pounds. So you can see my point here is that on the surface, the GSA may seem like it's too heavy, too expensive and too much stuff. But if you actually look at how it's equipped, there's a reason why it weighs what it does. And if you equip a GS or really any other adventure bike with all that stuff, you're gonna end up with a heavy bike at the end of the day anyway. So maybe just consider buying it from the factory that way and not having to you know, do all that stuff um, from the aftermarket. So with these details out of the way, let's head back outside on the bike and have some final thoughts. So final thoughts on the standard GS versus the GS Adventure. The first thing I will say is that you need to go and test ride, demo both of the bikes back to back. They feel a little bit different in their handling and in their size and their weight and their bulk and also in the seat height. Ultimately, you need to make a purchasing decision that you're comfortable with and is the right bike for you. So despite what a spreadsheet says, you're not riding a spreadsheet, you're riding a motorcycle. So you need to make a decision based on uh, other factors besides just comparing specs on a piece of paper. However, with that being said, there's a few things on the GSA that are kind of hard to replicate on a standard GS. For one, you have the longer suspension travel. Uh, two, you have that different suspension rake angle, which changes the handling a little bit. Third, you have a higher seat height, which could be good or bad. Um, fourth, you have that extended fuel range, which you're just not going to get on a standard GS unless you want to start carrying fuel cans, rotopacks, things like that, which personally, I'm not a fan of having to strap extra fuel to my bike. Another thing I want to say is that the GSA tends to hold its value just a little bit better than the standard GS. So if that's important to you, that's something you probably want to consider. If you're thinking of heavily accessorizing your standard GS and bolting a bunch of stuff onto it, then you really, really should consider the GS Adventure because you're getting more value for your money. And also the other advantage of buying a GSA with all the stuff is that it's already put on from the factory. You don't have to pay for the labor or spend your own time trying to bolt all this stuff on. Everything is factory finished. It holds up really, really well. It's really well put together and it's tested and certified by BMW um, under warranty and for safety and all those sorts of things. You won't regret your decision whether you get a standard GS or a GSA. They're both amazing bikes. I keep coming back to the GS as my favorite all-around motorcycle that I've ever ridden and ever owned. I sincerely hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please hit the thumbs up, please subscribe, and please hit the bell for notifications. You can support me on Patreon down below if you want. Thanks again for watching. Ride safe, and we'll see you on the next video.